Okay, so now that we know what and why we would use NDK, um, or I guess when, the qu next question is how do we get started? So again, on d.andrew.com, under the SDK tab, there's a section on the NDK right here. And so this actually offers links to download a, a version of the NDK. In this case, the actual latest version is 7B or R7B as it's called, for the particular host platform that we'll be developing on. So I've already downloaded the one for my Mac operating system, so I'm just going to go and expand it. I'm going to go over here into my terminal, type tar jxvf, the download, which is where it is, and then Android NDK, hit enter, and you'll see that it'll essentially uncompress the sources, the tool chains, sample code, documentation, a whole bunch of things into the um, Android NDK folder. I also like to create a symbolic link to this folder on my machine and then use or add the, the final uh, uh, pseudo directory into my path so that I can execute shell scripts from within the NDK directory um, essentially from anywhere on the on the on my system. So here's what I'll do. I'll type ln-s Android NDK NDK. Of course, on you know Windows environment, this is not something you would do. Uh, but uh, what what is useful is to be able to um, essentially add NDK to your path. In this case, what I have is the somewhere in here. There should be NDK. Um, NDK added to my path. I guess it's right here. Okay. Um, if you haven't done so, you may want to consider doing that because it will come in handy later. But ultimately, we now have the NDK. You can see this is what we'll find in the directory. The main uh, uh, script, if you will, that we'll use is the NDK-build, although we'll talk about other sorts of tools later on.